Hi, I'm Rosie Reese with the Sounds Good Choir for Older Adults in the Chicago area. We sure do miss getting together to sing in person, but we're still here and we're going to sing for you now. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm one of the 177 singers who rose to the challenge to record this song at home. We hope that it warms your heart. watching and listening to an amazing group of singers, the Sounds Good Choirs for Older Adults and the Good Memories Choir for people with early stage memory loss, their care partners, and singing volunteers. I'm Sandy Siegel Miller, co-founder of this organization and director of the Good Memories Program. And I'm Jonathan Miller, co-founder of Sounds Good and also its artistic director and CEO. Now before the pandemic hit, we were operating 11 choirs a week all around the Chicago area and in Southwest Michigan. But in mid-March, all of our rehearsal locations closed and we moved everything online. So instead of doing concerts like this in person, hundreds of our singers learned how to sing at home, record themselves at home, and send in files from home. And as you'll see, we are so proud of everyone's hard work. We've prepared a concert of four songs for you, along with stories of what it's like to be singing in a choir that can't meet in person, and some background on the music we're singing. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the show. show. Hi, my name is Jenna. And um, I never sang in a choir before four years ago when I joined Sounds Good. And I just loved it, and I still do. But as you know, we're no longer singing in the same room together since COVID started. So when our first, when our session closed down, uh, we switched to Facebook. And um, I went to the first session that was closed. And I said, I don't want to do this. I'm sitting in front of my computer by myself singing out of tune. This is not fun. And so I stopped. And then the summer session started. And I really missed everybody and I missed singing. And so I said, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the summer session. I'm going to come in with a different attitude. I'm going to say, we can't do it the way we were doing it before. We have to do it differently. So let me give it a try. So when I went in with that attitude, I found that I really enjoyed it. So I go on Facebook Live and sing. I'm still by myself in my room in front of the computer singing out of tune, but I get to see people's comments. I get to see Jonathan on the screen or Paul on the screen, and that's always fun. And so I found that, you know, you just have to be resilient and be adaptable. And when we can, we'll be back together in one room singing elbow to elbow with each other. But for right now, this is a really good way to keep community and keep singing and be happier than the times call for. Peace, my 
Hello everyone, my name is Paul Langford and I'm one of the assistant directors for the Sounds Good Choir and the Good Memories Choir. I've been uh, working with Jonathan Miller for uh, six or seven years, first of all in another group that he had called Chicago A Cappella, and then most recently in these two new choirs. And initially my roles included making rehearsal tracks for singers to learn their parts and then I started filling in leading rehearsals in Arlington Heights uh, when Jonathan got busy leading rehearsals all over Chicagoland. And that has morphed into leading rehearsals every week online during the pandemic and leading sing-alongs for the Good Memories Choir uh, every few weeks. Um, it's been a, a, an amazing experience for me to, uh, to see the whole situation evolve and grow. Uh, I, I confess that leading rehearsals online was, uh, was daunting and difficult and strange for me at first. And it still is, it still is to a certain degree, but I've just kind of gotten used to it. But what I didn't expect was the connection that I've made with the singers. When I lead rehearsals for uh, Sounds Good Choir on Facebook Live, I can't see or hear them. They can't see or hear each other. They can see and hear me. And they can go back and watch the video later because it stays online. But it's, it's a strange experience to lead a rehearsal where you can't see or hear anyone. They can send comments down the side of the screen and I can read their comments and respond. There's a little bit of a delay, but somehow, miraculously, through, through music and through the hearts of these incredible people, a connection has been made, a relationship has been started. And that's evidenced by what they say in the comments and by emails that they send me. I, I, I feel a deep personal connection to these people and I consider them my new friends and I certainly look forward to the day when I can you know uh, meet them in person shake their hands say thank you most of most of them I've never met or never seen in person the next uh, phase of the experience is when they send their videos that we use to compile virtual choirs I'm doing the audio mixing uh, another person Kelsey Cox is doing the video portion but as each deadline approaches, I, I receive their videos via email. So I can see their faces, I can put a face with a name, and I begin to assemble the tracks in my software that you see behind me and uh, start to mix the audio. And, and it's so uh, deeply touching and moving to me to hear the choir come together, literally voice by voice. And there's something very deeply touching and poignant to me about hearing their individual voices and knowing what they've done to, to deal with the technology. It takes a lot of courage to sing at home alone with headphones by yourself into a video camera. It's nothing like singing in a choir at all. I mean, the result of a virtual choir sort of looks like a choir to the viewer, but for the person creating their individual track, it's a bit of a lonely experience. So it's very touching to me to see them fight against the technology and whatever fear they might have or awkwardness of singing at home where others can hear perhaps, and then dealing with the challenges of uploading big files and so forth. It's very, uh, it's very touching. It's a, it's a moving experience to see the whole thing come together. And certainly when the choir is assembled by Kelsey, what we finally get to see online, but everything that leads up to that is a real labor of love and courage. And a community uh, has been created online. Major um, congratulations and props to Jonathan Miller and Sandy and Kelsey and Megan and all the people uh, on the Sounds Good Choir team that have led the charge and, 
and worked on all the difficult little minute aspects of this to keep it going online. And I, I feel delighted and honored to be a part of it. The summer sessions for the Sounds Good and Good Memories choirs tend to focus on rock and roll. And even though it's virtual, our 2020 session has done just that. The first song on today's program is Teenager in Love, which was a big hit for Dion of the Belmonts in 1959 and arranged for choir by Jay Althaus for Alfred Publishing. The second song, Blowing in the Wind, was written by Bob Dylan in 1962 and recorded by him the following year in 1963. Now, when Dylan talked about this song a little later, he said it really is a spiritual in his mind. And he references the slave song, No More Auction Block for Me, as a big inspiration for his writing Blowing in the Wind. Now, Blowing in the Wind has been covered by countless artists, probably the most famous one being Peter, Paul, and Mary, who recorded it, toured it, sold millions of albums with the song on it. And our arrangement for choir is based primarily on that arrangement with the vocal harmonies that are familiar to you if you're familiar with the Peter, Paul, and Mary arrangement. The third song on the program is Dancing to the 60s, which is a big medley put together by our colleague and friend Roger Emerson of four hot dance hits from that decade. The first one is Dancing in the Street, which was written by a wonderful creative team, including the late Marvin Gaye, and was a hit for Martha and the Vandellas in 1964. The second song on the medley is The Locomotion, written music and lyrics by the prolific and famous songwriting team of Jerry Goffin and Carole King, and that was a hit for Little Eva in 1962. The third song on the medley is Land of a Thousand Dances. Probably the, the most famous version of that was uh, by Wilson Pickett, recorded in 1966. There are some great music videos of Wilson Pickett singing that tune. You should check those out. And the final one is Twist and Shout, originally made a hit by the Isley Brothers, then of course covered by the Beatles and countless other groups. So before we sing Dance Into the Sixties for you, I want to encourage you to find a great pair of shoes that you can dance in because your dancing feet are going to get happy and you're going to want to stand up and be dancing all five minutes of that melody. It's a lot of fun. So before we sing that, I want to turn it over to Helen Gagel, a longtime friend and colleague who is a founding singer of our two Evanston choirs and now on our staff. She's got a hilarious personal recollection for you about the twist. So before she does that, I'm going to put on my best Dick Clark and George Carlin radio DJ voice and say, okay. Okay, take it away, Helen. Hi, I'm Helen Gagel, and I love singing with our good memories and sounds good choirs. Are you ready for a dance party? Next up is Dance Into the 60s, a medley that closes with Twist and Shout. That song takes me back to my teen years in a small town in Ohio. Unlike today's teens, we didn't have YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram. We had AM radio and 45 RPM records. That's the little one with the big hole in the middle. And we had Dick Clark's American Bandstand. Five days a week, my sisters and I would come home from school, turn on Bandstand, and watch those cool kids in Philadelphia do the latest steps. Then on Friday night, we would go to the American Legion Hall for the sock hop. The girls danced, the boys leaned against the wall. In 1960, Chubby Checker took the twist to the top of the charts. Now it took a while for this new dance craze to reach the hinterlands, except in Mercer County, Ohio, thanks to American Bandstand, the Gaggle girls were on it. We gave a clinic on the twist at the sock hop. Before long, the dance went viral, as we would say in today's parlance. Even our moms and dads and aunts and uncles were twisting. Not very well in most cases. But every time I do the twist, it takes me back to that sock hop. Perhaps the only time in my life when I was truly cool. Now, get up and dance.
Boy, was that fun. Wow. That's quite a workout. It's a workout for the singers. It's a workout for us if we're dancing. I sure hope you actually got your dancing shoes on and we're dancing for all five minutes of that medley. During the coronavirus lockdown, if you haven't had a chance to make it to the gym anytime recently and you're looking for some aerobic exercise, I recommend that you loop that song over and over until your heart rate's just as high as you want it because it's a fabulous workout. And every time I've actually danced to that medley, I've had a great time. So, um, and congratulations to everyone for putting that together. And especially Kelsey Cox, our video producer, and Paul Langford, our amazing audio producer. They are quite a team that pull that off as no small feat. So we're about to set up our last song, and I just want to introduce uh, Ken Cantor, one of our singers who is also a great rock historian. He has a very sweet, touching story for you about our last piece on the program. So without further ado, take it away, Ken. Hi, my name is Ken Cantor and I'm a proud member of the Sounds Good and Good Memories choirs. And I'd like to talk a bit about the song, Here Comes the Sun. When I first met my wife, Nancy, in 1966, she was already a major Beatles fan, and I became one soon afterward. She had by then collected all of their record albums to date. And after we were married in 1967, we bought each of the new albums as they came out. The 11th and next to last of the original recordings by the full group was Abbey Road, released in September of 1969 as a seamless collection of music, more like a classical suite than a set of individual songs. And the album contained the beautiful song, Here Comes the Sun, written by the so-called quiet member of the Beatles, George Harrison. At that time, Harrison was undergoing a difficult period in his life, and for a respite, he visited his friend, legendary guitarist Eric Clapton, at his home in Surrey, England. While there, Harrison strolled around the garden with an acoustic guitar and composed Here Comes the Sun. At a time of his despair, it became an expression of hope. As Clapton later said, George was just a magical guy and he'd show up, get up out of his car with his guitar and start playing. I just watched this thing come to life. I felt very proud that it was my garden, that it was inspiring it. Indeed, the song would help establish George Harrison as a composer on a par with his bandmates, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Here Comes the Sun is unique in terms of its structure, instrumentation, and relationship to the culture of the times. It makes brilliant use of syncopation, a Moog synthesizer, harmonium, and other more traditional instruments, and the influence of Indian music. Its primary theme is the affirmation of life through the natural occurrence of the sun, leading one reviewer to say that the song represented, quote, an awakening, an exaltation of the sun that began what is called the sun side of the album, 
with songs woven together with motifs, bridges, reprises, and surprises, and set within one another. Alan Billingsley, the arranger of our version of the song, first arranged the entire album with a friend as a project in a college course, and went on to adapt Here Comes the Sun for many kinds of choirs. It's been a popular arrangement, he wrote in recent comments to our conductor, Jonathan Miller, because of its positive message, the engaging melody, the wonderful harmonic structure, and the odd meter interludes and bridge with hand claps that make the entire song so fresh and infectious. Billingsley has expressed his appreciation to Jonathan for having chosen the song for our performance and said he's excited to see it come alive once again in our virtual concert. For this present moment, I think that Here Comes the Sun is an ideal selection for the Sounds Good and Good Memories choirs. Music critic Michael Gilmore has praised the song as a, quote, graceful anthem of hope among difficult realities. Like George Harrison in 1969, we find ourselves in a time of difficult realities that in the words of the song has seemed like a long, cold, lonely winter. I believe that our participation in the making of our virtual concert has been one of optimism and hope in which we can feel the ice is slowly melting and look forward to a day when we can perform together again in person. Our sense of community has been strengthened, I believe, in our finding a way to continue singing together until that day arrives.
That's such a great song. Thank you so much to the late George Harrison for thinking up Here Comes the Sun and brightening all our lives with it. Thanks to Alan Billingsley for the choral arrangement and to Ken Cantor for your wonderful introduction of the song. Speaking of thanks, Sandy and I would like to thank the staff, board, and volunteers of the Sounds Good Choir organization for keeping this whole thing going. And a special thanks to our singers for your determination, your courage, and your wonderful spirit. There is no Sounds Good, Good Memories without you. It's really true. And if you'd like to learn more about what we're doing, come visit us on our website, soundsgoodchoir.org, where you can learn everything that's going on with Sounds Good and Good Memories. Stay in touch. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Bye-bye.